Hey, what's going on, family? Happy New Year. Welcome to all those that are watching me right now through YouTube or are listening to me through Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It's a brand new year. Um, brand new years are so special to me because a year ago exactly was when I launched my podcast on YouTube. And we've just seen the hand of God throughout social media, throughout each platform, throughout TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, and it's been amazing. So we're on to we're on to year two now, and I believe that this is just the beginning of what God is doing. I want to thank each person for joining me on this journey, for being up to date with every post, with every video, with absolutely everything that we're doing as as a ministry here at Walking with Jesus. So I just want to thank you. And if you're watching me on YouTube, you can subscribe, you can share this video with somebody. If you're listening to me through Spotify and Apple Podcasts, share this audio with somebody, share this podcast with somebody that it could be a blessing to them. And today I want to talk about, um, I know a lot of people every year, a lot of ministries, a lot of pastors, they always bring, what is the word of the year? What is the word of the year? And that's all good and whatnot. And, but I believe that more than ever, especially this year in 2024, that the word of the year should be Jesus, that this year should be about him as each year should. But in emphasis this year, that we should fall in love with Jesus more and more, that we should just get deeper in the things of God, get deeper in our walk with God and commit ourselves more to the Lord. And as I was preparing to speak on this podcast for the first podcast of the year, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what should I bring? What should I say? And this word just kept ringing in my heart, and it's Revelations chapter 22, verse 12, where it says, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And I think the first part of this Bible verse is what really got my attention where it says, Behold, I am coming soon. And I think that's really a word that I could give to anybody who is watching or listening to me right now is that, Behold, Jesus is coming soon. And I think that we need the sense of urgency back in our hearts, in the church, and our daily life is that the Lord is coming back soon. Jesus is coming back for, for his church. And the Bible says that he's coming back for a church that is spotless, without blemish, without spot or wrinkle. And I believe that this is something that we need to live by daily. I remember hearing one day somebody say, we should live our day as if Jesus was coming back soon today as if he were coming back today as if he were coming back tomorrow for example people say you know live your day like this is your last day and i tell you that are watching me you should live your day as if jesus is coming back tomorrow like know that the lord is coming he is coming very soon the bible says that that the lord is going to come like a thief at night you don't know when he's going to come but he is going to come and the reason why is because we need to get that urgency back in our relationship with the Lord. We need to get our commitment back again with the Lord. If you lost your first love, if you lost that passion for God, I tell you this day to kindle that fire inside of you, set a flame, you know, set that gift, set that passion, find that passion back again in your life. Whether it was reading the word of God, find that passion again. Do whatever it is that you need to do to catch fire for Jesus again. You know, when people ask me sometimes, they're like, how can I get on fire for the Lord again? I always tell them this, go, into the, go to the one who catches, who makes you catch fire. Go to the one that John the Baptist said, there is, there's one coming after me who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. See, he is the one who will set you ablaze for him. The Bible says that he is the consuming fire. We can see in, in the day of Pentecost, when the 120 disciples were there in the upper room waiting, the Bible says that there was like a flame of fire on top of their heads. See, when you encounter the Lord, when you're in the presence of Jesus, what happens is that your heart starts becoming a torch of a flame. And it starts just wanting to love him even more and want to pursue him even more. So if you lost that fire, get it back. Find it. Do whatever it is that you need to do. If you need to jump on a fast, go on a fast. If you need to, you know, 
just lock yourself up in your room for an hour and two hours and cry and cry out to the Lord for him to fill you up again, that he will do it. But do it. Do whatever it is that you need to do to draw closer to the Lord. That's why one of my favorite Bible verses in the book of James where it says, where the Lord says, draw closer to me, draw closer to God, and he will draw closer to you. That's the key this year. If you want to be close to Jesus, draw yourself closer to him. And, and if you're watching and you're listening to me right now, and maybe you're that person where you're like, you know, I feel like I am on fire for the Lord. I feel like I am passionate for the Lord. Well, deep calls on to deep. There's, there's always more of God that you can encounter. There's a fresh experience that you can have every single day. There's a fresh encounter that you can have with the Lord every single day. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he broke the veil. We have now have access to the Father. We have access to his presence instantly. Through the blood of the Lamb, through what Jesus Christ did on the cross, he tore the veil. We don't need the sacrifice of animals anymore. We don't, we don't need to follow any rules anymore. We just got to follow Jesus. We just got to allow him to come into our lives, confess him as our Lord and Savior, and then Walk, walk and pursue after him. And I think this is the call of God for those that are watching me. This is the, the word that I felt for this year is that, behold, Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. And if you're listening and you're watching me, let this be an alert. You know, as we're all celebrating and enjoying and welcoming the new year and we're all happy and that's awesome and that's good. But also have the sense of urgency and the fear of the Lord in this, that he's coming back. We don't know when. It could be this year. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. It could be two years from now. But the Lord is coming soon. And I think that we need to be, as the Bible says, as those prudent virgins who they got up, they had oil in their lamps, and then they, and, and when their master called them, the bridegroom called them, he, they went and followed after them. And then the other virgins they were left sleeping. They didn't have oil in their lamps. As a matter of fact, I'm going to actually pull up that, that Bible verse because I just feel led to, to mention it. And it says it in, in Matthew chapter 25. And it says this. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. See, don't be like the unwise virgins who had their lamps but never filled it with oil. And, and, what, and how can, what does that represent nowadays? It's that person that keeps telling you, hey, come to church, but you just are, now go, are not going to church. You just don't want to go anymore. Or maybe the Holy Spirit speaking to you and putting that, that small whisper inside of your heart or just putting that feeling inside of you, hey, go pray. Hey, go pick up your Bible. But yet you don't want to do it. See, don't be like those unwise virgins where they thought, ah, Jesus is not coming soon right now. Ah, I'm going to seek God later on in life. I'm going to seek the Lord when I'm ready. I'm going to seek the Lord, you know, when, when, when I get older. Uh, seeking God is for older people. Oh, I, those, that, that is all, you know, silly stuff. Like, don't be like the unwise virgins who thought that way. They thought that the Lord was never going to come or that he was going to delay his coming or that they had time to repent. Oh, I, I'm going to have time to repent. One day I'll get it right. One day I'll let go of this relationship. One day I'll let go of this addiction. One day I'll let go of this sin. No, the time is now because we do not know when the Lord is going to come. But you know what? He's coming back soon. And we want him to come soon. 
That's why we say, Lord Jesus, come. We want him to come back and to pick up his church. But the Lord says that he delays his coming. For those who were not saved could be saved. What a loving and good father. But then at the same time, we also see in the Bible where he says he has to also come sooner and make his coming fast because the times are going to be so bad that even the elect will fall. Even the elect will end up rejecting the Lord. So God is being merciful on both sides. He's coming quick for those who are saved already, but then he's also delaying his coming for those who are not saved because he wants us to come to repentance and to recognize him as the Messiah, as, the, as our God, as Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. So that's your word. You that are watching me through YouTube, listening to me through Spotify and Apple Podcasts, get right with the Lord this year. Let that be. Don't make it a New Year's resolution. Make it a New Year's revolution. Allow Jesus to come into your heart and fully commit to him. How do you want God to commit to you if you can't commit to God? This is a relationship. He wants you to commit with him, and he himself will also commit to you. But if you're not committing yourself and daily seeking him, daily reading his word, going to church, following and pursuing him with all your heart, then how do you want him to commit himself to you in your difficult moments? See, this is a relationship where the Lord wants you to partake into it and he himself will also partake into it. That's why the Bible says that he who seeks will find. And I love that the original translation says, keep on seeking, keep on knocking, keep on looking, keep on seeking the Lord. The Bible says that those who diligently seek after the Lord will find him. I encourage you in this day, seek after Jesus. L let this be your New Year's revolution. Let this be what you put as the number one in your list. Let this be your list in putting Jesus first and following after Jesus. Make it a challenge in your life where you would say, this year I will read the Bible every single day. Let it be a challenge where you say, this year I'm going to pray and seek God and worship the Lord every day. Make it a challenge and put yourself as this year I'm going to go to church every single Sunday. I'm going to commit myself. I'm going to stop being a believer, and I'm going to become a disciple. I encourage you. The Lord is coming back soon. The Lord is knocking at the door at many people that are watching me. Maybe you're, 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 maybe you're one foot in and one foot out in the Lord right now. The Lord is telling you, get serious with me. Before you get your finances straight, before you get your gym life straight, before you get your family straight, before you get anything in your life straight, Get your relationship with Jesus this year straight. Fix your relationship with the Lord. Commit yourself to him. And I promise you, he will do the, thing and do the same thing and commit himself back to you. Let that be your priority, priority this year. Let it be the only priority right now to pursue him, to love him. Because the Bible says in the book of John that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Apart from him, you can't do absolutely anything. Stop trying. Don't enter 2024 doing things on your own and feeling like you can do it on your own. Because let me tell you, by the end of the year, you'll realize that you failed because apart from Jesus, you can't do absolutely nothing. So I encourage you in, th in this day, get back right with the Lord. And if you're on fire for God, catch more fire. There's it, enough is never enough in the Lord. There's always more in him. Like I said, deep calls on to deep. So I just want to pray for everybody that is watching and listening to me right now. And Father, I just pray for every single person that tuned in right now that is watching and listening to this podcast. Father, and I just pray that just like your word says in the book of Acts, that times of refreshing are coming. I pray that a time of refreshment can come upon your people, can come upon each person that is watching and listening to me. And Father, I pray that just like your word says, that you may take out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh, but a heart that is sensible, a heart that is on fire for you. I pray that you baptize people right now with your Holy Spirit and fire. That fire, Lord, just like Jeremiah said, that there's a fire shut up in my bones that I can't stop, I can't contain, that his word is like a fire shut up inside of me. I pray that the same way, Spirit of God, that your fire may descend upon each person, that you may encounter each person this year, Lord, and that this year may be a year of us becoming radical for you, of being sold out, a generation that is sold out for you, a generation that will forsake all 
and give it all to you. A generation that will put you on top on first instead of their own life, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, God. And that those that don't know you, Lord, that in this year, in this moment, they may encounter you as a good and loving father and as their Lord and as their Savior, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like I said in the beginning, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you guys want to support the ministry, all the details will be down in the comment section or in the bio. Um, if you feel led in your heart to support with us financially, connect with us um, in our services on Sunday or just be part of our weekly podcast, you can do all that information is right there on the descriptions. I love you guys. Happy New Year's and let this be a year filled with Jesus. I love y'all and I'll see you guys in the next podcast. God bless you.